Right. We'll open this uh, meeting of the Community Planning Commission, and for all those present, this meeting is being recorded. All right, what are we going to do first, Danielle? Um, let's talk about accessory dwelling units okay. first, if we can, if we could. Um, I actually, I can move it. I, there was a few months ago in our folder a, a memo with regard to the, the accessory dwelling units and just some bullet points and what we hope to achieve with it um, and we discussed that draft I think it was in August we discussed it yeah. um, and then at that meeting we had said that the next step would be to uh, have the building inspector attend the meeting and to kind of talk of talk through the, the idea all kind of together to see if we were on the same page as far as what the goals were for for this bylaw right so um, Jerry's here tonight and um, we just thought maybe we should go for it. Oh, I'm sorry, I can move it from the August folder to tonight's folder. I didn't uh, think to do that, but I can do that while we're talking. Um, I don't know if you want to talk through some of the bullet points, which I can I can do. Um, just go back to the my memo um, to see if these are still things that we we want to to, to, to achieve with this bylaw. You want to go through the bullet points yourself? Or? I mean, yeah, or I mean, I don't, it doesn't you have know, to be no, me. No, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Okay, I just have to. You're familiar with this? I just have to go back to my uh, my memo from from August and just pull it up because I didn't put it in the meeting folder. Right. And just so you know, Danielle and I uh, discussed these bullet points and um, full agreement, that, um, and it's drafted quite well. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm going to move it into your folder. Sorry. Boy, that's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, you want at the hard copy? I have draft. a hard copy right Danielle, there. I'm sorry. You looking at your draft? I yeah. I just wanted to move. Why don't it. we do? We just go to that folder. Yeah. So it's August, uh, the first meeting in August. So August sixteenth. Um, yeah, the sixteenth. Sorry That's, about that. Yeah, the, but the draft is the eleventh, right? Right. Uh, the, the date draft on the draft is the eleventh, but it's in the August sixteenth yeah. meeting. Yeah. Well, you have a front That's what you find it. Oh, you printed it out. Okay. Yep, yeah, it's dated uh, August 11th. It's in the August 16th meeting folder. I can start. Do you want me to start going? Go ahead. Through it? Okay. Go ahead, Dan. Um, so the points we wanted to be able to address are: um, this is a bylaw. So the the reason I guess question sometimes comes up: why would you do a bylaw? Because currently you can do a very big addition. You can have as many kitchens as you want. You can have a separate living space as long as there is still free access between the unit and the main house. That's still considered a single family house without an accessory dwelling unit. Right. This would allow to have a house to have a separate unit in it without the, that requirement for the free passage um, between the main unit and the accessory unit. And that separate unit counts as a complete closed off independent unit. That doesn't mean it's freestanding. It would not be freestanding the way we've drafted this bylaw. Be within the house, but it would be a separate enclosed independent unit. Um, this version of the bylaw that we had agreed on at the last time, uh, the last meeting, limit, limits occupants of the unit to family or caregivers, uh, requires a special permit from the CPC, uh, requires septic plans in the application to be sure there will be enough septic capacity, requires the owner of the main unit to live on the premises, either in the unit or in the main house, uh, limits the size of the accessory dwelling unit to 900 square feet or to, and to two bedrooms, limits the occupancy of the accessory unit to three people, requires the unit to be in the same structure as the primary house and it cannot be detached like a garage or carriage house. Um, any separate entrances have to be on the side or rear of the house, not in front, and the unit can't be sh used as a short-term rental. 
Um, it does not prevent any owner from installing multiple kitchens since the building code allows people to do this. Does not prevent a homeowner from putting in an addition that could be used as separate living quarters um, but has free and open passage between the unit and the primary house. Um, that's, that's not considered an accessory dwelling unit. Homeowners are already permitted to do this and this, that would not change. Um, it doesn't turn a single family house into a two family house because separate metering um, is, is um, prohibited. It would have to be in the same, the same utility meters. Um, so then what follows is the actual draft bylaw, um, which reflects all of those, um, you know, points that, that I just reviewed. So that's where we left it when we last discussed this in the summer. Um, thoughts about this, whether this is, you know, still something that we would want to go ahead with, um, whether there's anything more we would want to cover, concerns, anything else? Um, so first off, just does this add any units to our affordable housing in the town? No. Okay, I just want to be clear that the answer is no to that. No. Um, the other thing, I do think having a bylaw is helpful at this point because I'm not an attorney, but the, the definitions that, that Jerry and all of us have to use, an accessory use must be customarily incidental and subordinate to the principal use, and then that's just point number one, two, three. I speak in engineering terms, and I find those just so nebulous and very gloriously. We had Jeremiah here, but um, so I think it is good we're putting together, you know, a, a bylaw for it to be forthright. My my main goal is to kind of walk before we run. I do not want to detach. I think I've been really clear on that, and I think a lot of the people in the town don't want that. And speaking to some of the people on the select board and in other, in other uh, committees. Um, and so that's kind of my goal. And so if I, if I use that as guiding principle and I'm reviewing this, one of the things I'm nervous about is in definitions, in, in, in specifically what is attached and detached. And, and I think we could, I think we could probably make that definition a little tighter. Or, or add to it. And so I'll give an example just in reading as it's written right now. So a building attached, and it's item number two on the second page, or really the first page, really the first page of the memo. Um, a building having any portion of one or more walls in common. So we're, we're, there's a lot of room for interpretation, which again will handcuff Jerry, is breezeways, um, you've got the kissing cousin kind of thing where you have you throw in a new garage and you just touch the corner of the house and boom you're attached and yet you're a garage with an ADU you know we need to get some more about the shared wall part the it a minimum uh, linear foot of share wall um, so you're not just doing the little touch in the corner by a, by a foot or whatever or doing the breezeway thing. Oh, I'll throw a wall on the breezeway. Now I've got it. Now I'm, I'm detached. So that's my biggest thing is to avoid people skirting this language to make detached ADUs. Okay, I'm all for ADUs inside the dwelling, even additions to the dwelling that will add an ADU. But I don't want to see second houses being built on on throughout the town because to me that will change the town. You know, in my opinion. And to add to that, I'm full agreement with what you just said. Reason being is because we have a we have a we have a garage that was constructed right here on Park Street. Don't want to say the exact uh, you location. You know exactly where it is. And they put in a kitchen above. We couldn't stop them. You can't stop them from putting in additional kitchens. They put in a kitchen above. Um, it's attached to that breezeway. And I told them, uh, I'm not going to give you a certificate of occupancy until I have a deed restriction to you give me a, get a single day family deed restriction. They never came in for it. Legally, I can't make them go out of the house. So it, it, it would be nice to get single family deed restrictions. And I think doing something like this is going to, is going to aid my job tremendously. It's, that's how I look at it. I'm trying to look at it from your we, not, we might not agree on a lot of things, you know, it's not that. It's this I agree on. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, really I try to think yeah. in your, the, the, they're going to be coming to you. I mean, the way it's written right now, they are coming to us. But eventually, I think, as long as things work out well, this 
this board might then release that, and I think that we all talked about that as a group. At first, we want to make sure we control this, but at some point, it's probably going to get dumped all on your lap in your department. And so, you, we need to give you better language than what's been in the books for forever, which is just nothing. I appreciate that. And, yeah. and so that's one, and we don't have to belabor it, but you know, let's let's try to think of some language that works. That's that's I think what so I would just. You would like to change that definition? That work. Yeah, for the well, yeah. so the for, the for that one for building to make attached. It a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily change that definition, but you add another one to yeah, clarify. Yeah, add a clarification you, of just the common wall. That's all I'm saying is that let's just yeah. get that more ironclad. That yeah. this <coughs> is not even attached. No, that, that's fine. That's fine. So Jerry can say, "I'm sorry, that doesn't, you know, that right. doesn't." And they, if they get, if they want to argue, they we can say the same thing. Or CBA or they are coming to us first, right? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. We should also look into by adding this bylaw. Does that add to our tax base as well? Well, that gets to to our assessors. That kind of gets to my next point. Um, is I'm not. I'm, I'm sure that's what Debbie's department will do. But with existing kind of not not non conforming, but like illegal, for lack of a better word, illegal ones, and even the grandfathered ones. What, the, what's missing a little bit here is too is a compliance section, and that section should probably speak to the common sense things that would apply which is when you go to try to sell this property you're basically you have a, an illegal you know it's either not permitted through the town uh, like they just did it on the side or I guess somehow Jerry you know with the whole multiple kitchen thing they were able to make it work but essentially it would not comply with our zoning so it's in your best interest to apply you know, in, in, in with the town and then get reinspected and make sure you're in compliance with all the different things you need to be and then you'll be on the books um, and then possibly again subjected to a, an assessment is being another prop you know but I think if well, I talked to Deb about a long time ago it's still all about square footage and stuff like that but if you're adding bedrooms yeah things like that that could change your assessed value and I think anybody adding an ADU would understand that possibly but I don't think based on what Deb said it's not a big number but I don't want to pass in the past I've been here almost five years now and within that time we've we, we've had well over a hundred people adding additional kitchens in their homes um, so it's that's a big number right um, and then on top of that the people who don't want to do the they don't want to do these deed restrictions that I have, and they basically they go to they go to an attorney. The attorney says, "Well, geez, that's kind of restrictive language." No, it's not. All it says is that you're going to keep this as a single family, but it but it has to be. You can't have any restrictions, so you can't put a door there. And when we when we leave, we take a picture of that opening to make sure that it's not framed off as though you can just put a door in right away when we leave. Right. So doing these ADU. A ADU units is, is huge. Yeah. It's, it's definitely so going to benefit. It allows them to put a door. So can you legally. drop the deed restriction then if they get into compliance? They, they, there's a new restriction or or notarized for ownership and staying in one of the dwellings, I think, here. But would you, you be able to or they be able to drop that deed <coughs> restriction with compliance? I would think so. I would think I, so too. I would, I would so draft another something. So selling item to, probably yeah. to add to the, the call it the the, the clause or the, the addition in here just for compliance, that would be another, I think, positive. Thing. For the people that have signed those, they'd like to probably get them off their deed. Yeah, um, good to get it off. Yeah. See, if they're in compliance with the law, there's nothing wrong with it. And in the past uh, few years, we've had, I, I couldn't even tell you, I couldn't even count the amount, the amount of times we've had real, real estate, a real estate agents call saying, is this an actual in-law unit? No. We only have four legal in-law units in the town. And only four? Four. Yeah. four. From the four legal what, 70s, right? Those yeah. are grandfathered. All grandfathered in, yeah. Yeah, but there was a period of time when they renewed the laws, they forgot right. to renew that segment. Right. And so for a period of time, it was legal to do it, to, to add them on until they... The major only it. four did it. Yep. We, we had one at 15 Swan Pond Road, and then they turned it into a, back into oh, a yeah. family home. And I, and I think the way Danielle drafted this, I think, was exceptional. Um, but I do like the, I do like that caveat of, of putting 
not over that garage, not over that, you know, get that breezeway way out of it. Only yeah, a real, a real, yeah, yeah some real yeah. within the primary. Yeah. And we'll right. add better definition yeah. to attached building right. and we'll describe what comprises, you know, what you have to have for a shared yeah. wall. So and, and, and I think the people, actual. as we have an <laughs> aging community there, I think the people will be better well served if their parents or whoever it may be is on the same floor and they sure. can help yeah, them no instead argument. of going up a set of stairs. No, no, yeah, no, no question argument. with that. Go ahead, Dave. You got a couple more? Yeah, no argument on that, Terry. Um, let's see. And then uh, there was, um, I think it's, uh, there's two mentions of it, but what made me, again, nervous for the same reasons. Uh, second page, number one, under use and dimensional regulations. So the unit will be a complete separate housekeeping unit containing both kitchen and bath. So, again, I think it's good to be redundant in that. I would just make sure when I just read separate housekeeping unit, it just needs to be modified or clarified. It's within the existing house. Oh, add that to it. And, yeah, that's all. And I just put a note on this. And then the next one I'm down, only one accessory dwelling unit may be created within a single family house. And it says, or house lot. The house lot part makes me nervous because, again, it kind of, it, it seems to indicate that you would have an offsite. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ability to throw it on your lot. Yeah, so take it off. Take the house lot, lot out of there. Okay. So Remove the house lot. To I me, that just gives us more. You know, it's black and white. Maybe and, take um, out where it says ten. You already covered the well. RMLD. Kind of known. So that was a question, Jerry. I just it's not really a change in language. You know, I get I get the single meter thing, but if, if one was to call up RMLD. <laughs> For a meter, it wouldn't work because it's still got to go through your department on electrical permit, right? Yeah. So, so it wouldn't. I just was making sure there's a stop gap. The electrical well, inspector. No, actually, yeah. <laughs> we get a lot of charging in here too. The, elect uh, the electrical <laughs> inspector wouldn't allow it. Yeah. Me. I wouldn't allow it either. So. Okay. So that was that. And my my last question was just um, I have no problem with the size, um, you know, the the occupants, all that stuff is. But is there kind of a max that we're dealing with it, or is the only limiting factor septic? Because our, what if we have a house that's 3,000 square feet, has six bedrooms, and then they want to add on some space, you know, to accommodate the bigger family, and it's like, now it's two more bedrooms, now you're up to eight bedrooms, it's got, it can handle already seven occupants, now you get 10, it just starts to get a little crazy, and yet we're only saying, you only need two parking spaces, you know? it's like. How do we kind of control scale here? Because it seems like the existing should matter, uh, but again, I want to give everybody the opportunity in town, really, because you know, at first this all started about what district do we put this in, right, or or, or you know, residential zone. Now it's like, okay, you can do it anywhere, but you know, what, let's try to be within reason here. I I, uh, <laughs> I hear where you're going with that, but uh, I think that perhaps having to go before us to get a permit gives us the opportunity to say, eight bedrooms, you need more parking. Yeah, that's true. And I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, and I think but that'll take you out of parking. fairly limited, a very limited number I get of that. properties. Right. Well, in this town, there's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, I think have some. Monticello up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think, I think <laughs> Warren's right. And I was just I trying to think in advance, no, advance, no, advance no, of slip boards. Just making it so when it's going to be Jerry's, no one's having to go back and change the zone. It's kind of like blame, it just stands up pretty good. It just goes down back to the building department. Yeah, right. I, think so, I think what we got there is, is well, there's, there's a lot of restrictions in that already. It, it's very restrictive, However, but I, do, I think I in a good walk, that we, I do agree that we start with something that's, that's that, very controllable, and, so, and then we let, we, let, we let the string out a little bit at a time if it works out. So, David, is when, when you got the parking in there, I know there's parking in there. Yeah, it's the one, <laughs> one, minimum one. Minimum one. And the house needs two, as it right. well, for Okay, yeah. so as long as it's minimum, so that if we see that, it, if the if the board sees that it needs to be more, they can add more on. Well, the thing it would be if you already had a six bedroom home, <coughs> it's highly likely that and you only have two parking that, spaces. That, that, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. Why? Yeah, you gotta so, have you so gotta have uh, a three car garage. It may not. Yeah, it may not right. be. And, and it's, it so that's six cars issue, right there. Yeah, may not be a huge issue. So. So there, there is a few sidebars going on, but the thinking there again is, but I don't know if there is an answer, but if we were to address it, it would, as Warren said, well, they get to come back through, they come through us first, and yeah. we, could, we could kind of question that, but I'd like to get it to where you maybe have that in the language, so you don't have to really, it's not even one that we have to make a call on, but I'm not sure if there's, um, 
the smarter people on the board here that can speak to it. Um, but I don't know, you know, if there's a way to, you know, to write it. What if we put something in there that just says, um, you know, at the CPC's discretion, um, additional parking spaces may be required based on um, number of bedrooms or something like right. that? I yeah, yeah. Would, you want something we, it, would it be fair to say over a certain like is it? Four bedrooms, if it's beyond, like the only two parking spaces, like well, you know, you think you think about it when people build these houses, they got little kids, <coughs> but sixteen years now they got drivers. Yeah. So if they've got two kids, then there's two parents. That's four cars. If they're all driving, they could be four cars. Right. So, well, you know, Ryan and I, our, our first objections to to this a little bit was, and this is a year back or so, is just. You know, turning the the yards, which seems to happen more on the smaller homes, but into the asphalt yard. You yep. know what I mean? Where it's just one exactly. open pavement. Yep. You know, no. and like, do you I want understand. that in every on every in, street? In the winter, in the winter time, they're supposed to have the cars yeah. off the street, right? Yeah, that, yeah. I was going to say they got to be off the street. Well, they, yeah, like they're already right, right? right? They're all so think all of the, the yard and everything. Think of the savings and spring water. water. But, yeah. We can't stop from I'm doing that. So there's yeah. nothing in the way. Yeah, you're hitting some of them right now. But anyways, but I'm, yeah, I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Those are my right. points. Warren, do you have anything else? Uh, no, a lot of the things that Very Dave's sure. going on, we've talked that's, about that's before. Right. right. Um, and, and again, I, I, I agree that it's, it's a, it is somewhat restricted the way it's written. But again, it, it's like it's, it's a good start. And we'll see how it, how it works how out. How it if, works. Yeah, and if it looks like it could be loosened up a little as we go along, we could do that. Right, I agree. But, uh, but, uh, but I, still, I think the most important, one of the most important points is that <coughs> Gives uh, people the opportunity to keep a family together, and I think that's the that's the absolutely point. Ryan. Um, just a, a couple points. One on, on Dave's point about the kind of kissing cousins building that he was talking about, the linear footage for the connection of the buildings. I, I wonder if some language there that allows the, the board some subjectivity in terms of like the architectural appearance would be appropriate. I think you know what what you're really getting at is people just like skirting around the law by, you know, by whatever linear footage we come up with, right? But really, the intent is to maintain the aesthetic as a single family home while allowing people to do an ADU. So I'd like to see the board get some subjective control over that, to just to be like, you know what, this this looks like it's, to, you know, you've satisfied the requirement, but not the intent of. Right. The, the law. I mean, we have any of the, the doors got to be on the side or in the right. back. Like, I think we should broaden that latitude a little bit because, it, I mean, I see some architectural disgraces all over town. I don't know what their intent is, <laughs> but I can imagine the way people will try to get around this and just create something that looks god awful and is readily apparent from the street what the intent well, no, is. Well, notice too, even satisfied Ryan, I, I thought about that too a little bit. I even had it in the note aesthetic element, but. Since it is all attached, or it should be, you're really going to be, you're already, the precedent is set. So whatever the house right. aesthetic is, is going to be pretty much what well, it is. If, unless you go, they, if, if you drive through some of these uh, newer, bigger neighborhoods, you see two front doors on them already. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's not, you know, in, in unless somebody decides to come along with three front doors, which is unlikely, you know, anything you're talking about is not going to change much from what's already yeah. existing. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, but if it's detached, the, the Bible, that's when you get into aesthetics because then it's a totally different structure. Yeah, and right. to save money, they could build it in a certain way. But usually, if it's within the same building, even the addition of the 900, most likely it's going to follow. But I think it's still valid to give us discretion, though, in that when you do have somebody that's trying to skirt it and, and just have it barely touching the house. Or yeah. Well, why don't we put that in as one of the findings that the CPC will make as far as, um, you know, that, that the aesthetic of a single family house needs to be maintained and, you know, we can work that into the language and then... Right. This is, this is the, the bylaw. There's still yeah. going to be some rules and regulations. And it's good to put it all in the bylaw for yeah. the end, so it's yeah. clear. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. regulations yeah. on the entrances anyway. We yeah. the entrances one of you Right. So we got some of that in there already. Yeah. Um, uh, and then my other comments was regarding the the definition here, what the bylaw does. I, I just am concerned about the ones that are just unenforceable, limit of number of limiting the occupants of family or caregivers, uh, requiring the owner to make to live on the premises, mm -hmm. occupancy to three people. I mean how like I get like that's the intent here, but 
we have no way to enforce any of that. So while it's our intent, like we, I mean, I feel like we're giving ourselves a false sense of security by putting that in there. Well, yeah. no, this is no teeth. So it's also for uh, restricting to family members or caregivers. Exactly. We can't yeah, enforce that. Yeah. Yeah, I short -term know. Airbnb rentals. I mean. That's something that we, we, can, we can't enforce. Yeah. Airbnb, I've already shut down uh, okay, two. So and, kind of yeah, that one. Well, yeah. the neighbors, yeah. the neighbors help with that. Well, what it is is our zoning bylaws say no short-term rental. So that that includes everything. No right. short-term right. rental. That would fall uh, maybe difficult to enforce, but potentially yeah. enforce. I that's what I think that's when your neighbors come in. You know, they see yeah. these cars pulling up constantly, and they're not this correct they different cars, yeah. and they're going in and they're using the key yeah. to get in, or they've got a lock box on the side of the house. Yeah, that's the same as like the home business, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 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 Yeah, so you got you got to rely on your, uh, you know, the people who are impacted by it the most yeah. would be the neighbors. Correct. I know it's probably not. I, I mean, you're absolutely correct that, that the enforcement of this is going to be would be almost impossible. However. Yeah. There has to be some set of rules, so if an issue does come up, we have something to fall back on. Right. Yep. Right. So, I mean, and that's and what there are a number for. of things, in, you know, that are like that. Um, but if we're gonna, <laughs> if we're going to get this started, we need to yep. put this bylaw forth. I mean, and we're going to have to accept the fact that it's there are portions of it that just aren't enforceable. Yeah. And then my last comment was to Jerry's <coughs> point about the, the Park Street example you gave. Is there any teeth to that at this point? I mean, if you're not issuing a CEO, I guess, does that, is there some way that that's getting documented so upon sale? That's the only time it's going to, that's exactly what happens is upon sale, selling okay. the property, people say, well, this is a, uh, it, it's an in-law unit, or it's two units. No, it's not. It's a single family. And, right. and that's how I recognize it. And I will not, I will not change that. Okay. Is there enough? Into, is that something that needs to be better papered within this or in, in another way so that that? I mean, I'm just thinking that's a great deterrent. Well, something like that has to be skirt around it. Like, is there a way to kind of cement that so that people are aware that if they try to get around this, they may be still be able to occupy. You can't kick them out. Well, I think but the, it's going to linger the, over the property. I don't know how we can. I think I don't the only know thing you can do is what he's doing, and then try to encourage them to uh, bring it to code. Yeah, I mean that that's the that's the uh, I mean you, you can't uh, it's gonna be difficult except when a situation like this arise say, Okay, why don't you bring it to code, call, get your inspections and now you can move on in that direction. If you've already done the vast majority of the work, how much could it cost you to finish it? Yeah. Right. And get it and get it legal. So yeah, I, get I think it legal. what he's doing now is probably a good good deterrent. They are and under forty A, uh, which which is the mass zoning zoning bylaws um, I have no power once I leave the property once that once that permit signed off and everything passes I can't go back in there unless the fire department goes back in there for for, for some type of uh, issue uh, if there's a fire or whatnot then I can go in there and we can to, to a certain degree so we're bound yeah. but if they if you haven't given the CEO and signed off on it you can still access it Correct. No, because after X amount of time, the permit is uh, the null and void. Yeah. Okay. Correct. What's that? Two years. Uh, if, if you're continuously working on it, it it can go for three, four. Oh, geez, yeah. But but you have to prove that you're continuously working on it. You have to keep coming to me, and you have to ask for a six month extension, extension each and every time before that six month expires. If you don't don't do not come before that six month expires. I have the right to say this is this is null and void, or I do have the right to say yes. I, I will give you that uh, six months. Um, we do usually have a fee for that six months, um, unless it's something that's basically out of somebody's hands, because the, the the fee is for clerical and whatever type of work that we have. And it, it, and I'm also trying to drive it with a fee to to make sure that people can continuously work on it. It, it just gives them an incentive. Why? generate another fee if you can be continuously working on it. Um, and if you're not working on it, that's when the fees come in. It becomes an issue. Anything else? Can I ask a question? Well, I was just waiting for the board and I was going to ask Jerry if he had anything oh, he sure. wanted to yeah. add. Okay. Yeah. 
What do you think, Jerry? I, I think this is all good. I, I, I like everybody's suggestions. Um, uh, I, I like how we're going to define things, um, but there's only so th there's only so far we can go. Right, right. We we wanted to do more, but we can't do more. Yeah, correct. We can't do more. Yeah. Daniel, you have any questions for the changes that that are wanted to be made? No, I'll uh, update the draft with all of the uh, comments that were made, and um, I can bring the draft to our next meeting. I'll review them first with Jerry to be sure that yeah, that's what we're good idea. In is possible. That way, he doesn't have to. Yeah. Rich. Yeah, just uh, not just not now. Well, no, I just wanted to get through everybody here first. That's fine. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, uh, just a few questions and comments. One is, why three versus two? Why why is three the number versus two? Of what arguments? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know. Is any was there any? Someone suggested it, but I don't. Yeah, I, don't I think remember it's, what I think it's you know parents and a child if that has to be or something. I'm not. Who knows why. 900 square feet is pretty small for three people. I would agree. Not really. Two bedrooms, though, but. Two bedrooms? It's not that small. You, you guys live in big houses. I live in less than something. Uh, yeah, you, got, you, got, you, you think these big houses we live in. My daughter has a 475 square foot apartment. Yeah. Condo. It's a one bedroom. It's not that small. Okay. I just, so, you know. I would suggest two versus three. That just my, you know, know, my thoughts. But unless somebody, unless somebody was going to have on that point, you can't police it, though. I, I understand. Yeah, we can't. I think, yeah, yeah, we I think can't, you should be setting up guidelines. It could have six people in there. Yeah. I understand. But I yeah. think that you should be setting up what is intended. And I think two makes Well, we said sense. three because you got two bedrooms. Yeah. If you got a married couple, and they're usually in one bedroom. And then the other bedroom could be occupied by yeah, these could another. Be the, these could be their caretaker. Know, the caretaker. Son or daughter yeah. of the primary occupant. Okay. Right. No, and, and that's that's kind of what not, we were looking you're at. you're not getting into this, though. They're already over the limit. And yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. But I would agree, after three, it's getting pretty tight. It, it's, yeah. Yeah, it, it, after three, it gets really small. And I, I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. All right. And is Anything there, else? Oh, sorry. Go and ahead. It's, it, there's no fire escape requirements. Um, but that's... Just code. That's code. That's all code. Gotta be able to get yeah. out window, that's, you don't need to do We don't that. have to put that in there. That's code. No, it's a, that's code. They, they have to have certain size windows. Um, and, and if they have a bedroom and it's above a certain certain story, they have to have certain size bedrooms. So that's part of the yeah. program yeah. process. Okay. And then, um, uh, let's see. On the parking limitations, I was thinking not adding more. I, I mean, I wasn't thinking like, I was thinking that people are going to start paving their lawn. Right, and that that I don't think you want to see happen. No, so and that's why well, I think this, about that. this way it's better. It's kind of saying, okay, you're supposed to have two in the primary, so we're going to let you use one of those for the ADU. Yeah. But as Warren said, we'll take it under consideration when it comes before. If it's ridiculous, like it's six yeah. bedrooms and they're adding three, there's yeah. only two parking spaces. Yeah. But I agree with you. Like you don't want to encourage more paving if we don't need it. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, we don't yeah. want more paving. We that, don't want more covered paving. Either. There may be yeah. there may be ten less sprinkler heads though, which is not a bad thing either. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Right. Just uh, three under three other points. Um, uh, so for the owner being part of the building, have you thought about doing a once a year like, like attestation? Yeah, the owner has to sign off who's living there and that they're still living in there once a year and make that a report. I, I don't have that, I don't have authority. Yeah, yeah I don't know that, that we do either. Yeah, I, I don't know who would have that authority. It's more just, can you, can you, the re can you do it though? Can you do it though, even if they don't submit it, just to remind people what the, well, I think it's better that I think I like what you're kind of getting at in the sense of again with the walk before we run approach that it has an expiration and right now it's not really expiring but on the sale you know the the, uh, the new buyer within 30 days needs to send an affidavit saying I, I'm going to occupy um, you know one of the prime one of the residents I think Daniel right <clears throat> and that's about it. So it's not really acknowledgement of the bylaws or of whatever, but you're just you were saying, hey, you're not, you're acknowledging one of the points, I guess, that you're well. That the owner, owner's, I think the owner, owner, I think the owner of being in the house is really important. But, you know, it, it, it is. I think that's for really the neighborhood. The yeah, for the neighborhood because it's their name right. who's on. It, but know? as far as yeah. we, what maybe you're getting at, and maybe I just heard it wrong, but just that re-up part so that you know it's not getting out of hand, you know, there or whatever. 
Yeah. I don't, but that may be that a step too far. It's yeah, step too far. Too far. That requires inspection and all this kind yeah. of stuff. So it's, well, it's I'm, really not, I'm not even saying you have to. I'm just saying you set it up. It becomes an administrative thing. Right. If they don't that's, submit that's it, you just know they didn't submit it. But you now you need an administrator to run the thing. Yeah, well, yeah. It's a whole, it's, it's a whole other person. It's you don't just have Kathy in the building. I, I, don't, I don't think it's oh, that. Oh, Kathy's, <laughs> Kathy's overwhelmed as it yeah, is. So. I, don't think <laughs> it's, I don't think it has to be. We, that we common. can't. We, we can't. We can't be holding everyone's hand. Yeah, I think it's a little that's, too big. You know, brother. that and, is and, probably a little too big, brother. Yeah, that that in itself could kill a bylaw. And it could prevent people from, what we're trying to do is, is make it a friendly situation so that right. they go and get their permits. They go and do it, they do it right. They let us know, know, know about it. it. And let the fire department know how many It's not a fire there. trap, you know, it's yeah. not, you know, yeah. okay. all, all right, so two last points. One is um, for the people that already have the existing ones, you're going to create an amnesty program so they can get, in, get, get on board. Yeah, and I don't think it's even really an embassy. We, we talked about that, just the compliance part. So you, you get what Jerry's been doing here the last two or three years is this this deed restriction. So that gets lifted. So that's a huge yeah. incentive. And then the other one would be that if you are if you do want to sell, you've, you've now made your, if you want to get in you compliance. Legal. Yeah, you're making it legal. You're, you legal. Can, there's actually, a lot. You can actually say, I have a new law department if you want to use that term or, yeah. or an ADU or whatever. You but if I had an existing one of those units and I never went through the process. If I had the ability to make it legal, I would like to do that. You know, yeah, and, yeah and, and there's so, no penalty. But so there's the no only penalty. thing would be building department wise, we have to, and you know, Jerry can maybe help us here, you know, they do need an inspection because if he comes through there and says, you know, your window, that's not an egress and all this kind of stuff is wrong, it does need to be fixed in order for you, if not, Hey, no problem. You're still an illegal ADU. If you, I didn't see anything, you're out of there. But maybe Jerry can't do that once he's there. You know, the can's yeah, open. Yeah. But you, I would say that's where it goes back through the building part and make sure, even septic, that you've got like the correct criteria. So I, I think yeah. from the few people I've talked to, a lot of people would like to be legal. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? No, they would no. like to be legal. Yeah, I'm with you. So, yeah, well, you know, some sort of an amnesty program to let people know. They would have to yeah, sign like something. Jerry did what he did. Yeah, yeah. The only they, they would have to sign something allowing me the the access. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, right. But if, I mean, for those who are motivated, who feel they did the right, right. job, they would do that. Right. And, they and would then you could officially do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or to find out that they did a bad job. I mean, there could be a Maybe. policy that the building department has for amnesty if they choose to do that. I wouldn't necessarily put it as part of the zoning bylaw, no, but either. the building yeah. department could certainly right. come up with Yeah, that, you wouldn't you know. want the, that's not a, that's not that's a, that's fine. Yeah, bylaw. That's, that's fine. I'm just yeah. trying to think of the totality of the problem, right? No pits, right, Jerry? Right. <laughs> last no. last point. I'm just because it's such a it would be a big change for us. Should you do like a first year limited number of permits just to see how it goes, and then increase that over time so that if you had to change, you do that. no, you, you you can. Hamilton does it. Um, a, a few towns do do it. I don't know. Again, I think is if it's up front, it's in the it's in your bylaws. You can do it. It's just uh, but they they do limit it. So I once it I'm not, I'm not even saying it's North Andover at one point tried to limit the number of building permits uh, because they were afraid of overwhelming their schools, and they went to court and they lost big time. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. that gets into school permits. stuff and stuff. I mean, but, but you can limit <coughs> special permits. Yeah, right. I mean you no, can't it, limit all building permits. Certainly yeah, maybe that not, was what it is. You can look yeah. up the Hamilton one, but the, they they do it because the point I, is, is that the point is you're making your best shot at trying to come up with a policy that you think is going to work. You may find, hopefully not, but you may find that you have to tweak this or tweak that. And so instead of it just becoming instantly out of control and then you have to dial it back, if you started out a little bit more conservative, then you could let that policy build over time and change the bylaw if you have to to match what's going on. That's so good. Like that, I mean, the people got to come to the board <coughs> to, get, to get their okay for permit for this. And it's going to be the board's responsibility. I don't think Jerry's going to see any more than he's already seen. Yeah. To be honest with you, because I mean, I mean, even if he sees a few more, and, and if you if the, if somebody owns a house in a neighborhood or a house that's big enough to do something like this, they're going to think a while before they do it because because it it, it it truly may <coughs> be considered a, a, a depreciation of the property. You know, so I. Uh, um, I think it'll go slowly in the beginning. Yep. Sometimes people get used to it. Um, so I don't know that putting a limit on the number of them 
sends but, the right message. I mean, I, I'm, sends a bad, I think it sends a bad message on that. We want them to voluntarily come forth and tell us everything and let, it, and let the building department go through the whole thing with them so that what we uh, end up with is knowledge of what's there for the fire department and safety because of the inspections. Yeah, I think okay. Rich, Rich is coming at it where I totally understand just more of a cautionary walk before you run things, but what I would be afraid of is say we did 10, 15, whatever the number is, in you know, we hit that limit within six months, and then you're going to have a bunch of people still building illegal ones, and poor Jerry's right. going to deal with that. So, yeah, yeah. Right. might as well, if we're going in, let's go all in and then give Jerry you know, the tools. And, and well, you'd be in control down. of the government, you'd be in control of it's true. Right. Right. We're starting with 15 C. They're coming through here so we know what we're going to do, Jerry, because we can ask Jerry questions if, if you know they don't have to be approved the first night. If, if it's really yeah. a weird one, you don't have to. it will be one night. I don't want to hold somebody up on something like this, but. If there's on the line, then we'll say we'll get you on the next meeting, and we'll have a conversation with Danielle and right. with Jerry and get his opinion, and mm -hmm. you know that's how we'll do it. But I think that'd be rare, right? Yeah. I mean, unless it's I guess I, you know, they're going to comply. They're not going to comply. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for. All right. I this. think. Um, a good afternoon. Is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, no, it's just the conference room that's oh, yeah. on Zoom. That was, I, there was someone. Oh, there was somebody. Richard, somebody rather, was on Zoom for a while. Yeah. And he, he left. I don't see anyone else. I just wanted to make sure because we are, we're, you know, yeah. we're hybrid. So. <coughs> Does anybody, other, any other anybody other in the audience comments? have an opinion on it? <laughs> no, I guess not. So I think uh, at that, we're going to let uh, Jerry go home. <laughs> Thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you all. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for your feedback and assistance. Well, no, thank you for your assistance. It you know, well, works well for all of you. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. Have a good night. Yeah, thank thanks, you, Jerry. you as well. Oh, thanks. Them. And then I think we're on to, uh, let me get back to my uh, agenda. One, we can do 197 Main Street? We could, or we, the a and is probably pretty quick. I, I think we have some. All right, want to do the a real quick? Yeah. All right. Which one? The frontage doesn't change. We're 14 and 16. 14 and 16. Yeah, there's week. no change in the frontage, so. Are you here for? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I am if you need me to be. Uh, I'm William Burser. I'm with the firm of Hayes Engineering, and we did the a and R for this lot. Um, the existing lot at number 16 was a substandard lot. It doesn't meet the frontage requirements, it didn't meet the area requirements, and it didn't meet the really uh, setback requirements. And the adjacent lot at number 14 had significantly more area and actually had area directly behind uh, the unit at number uh, 16. So, so two owners got together and decided to subdivide 16 to allow four, four, to allow 16 to become a legal lot relative to the setbacks in the area. Obviously, couldn't do anything with the frontage. So, 14 will will be legal in all respects, and 16 so will improve. If I may, parcel B. <coughs> used to used to belong to to fourteen to to fo fourteen yes right, okay and that's right behind sixteen so Correct. they they they're going to subdivide parcel B is going to be joined to sixteen correct well and, we did it was just a straight line projection of of lot it's just going to bring that lot line right back to the back yes okay right now I, I now it's a little more clear. It was a little fuzzier. The, the map in the upper left corner. Yeah. Oh. You can see the, it shows the existing conditions. So okay. Any other questions? Well, Debbie sent them out last week. The plans, I believe. And when I saw them, they looked fine. Okay. No questions. More? Until they get it. No. <coughs> Do you have a motion there? Did you have motions for the study? No. Why don't we just say? Yeah. Uh, Chairman, I move that the Planning Commission approve the 
Approval not required plan from JJ Monarch LLC dated October 20th, 2022 by Hayes Engineering. The property located at 14 and 16 Front Street, North Carolina, Mass. Map 213, parcels 1 and 2. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. <coughs> Redbob. Any discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Four in favor, and it's missing. Jeremiah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Oh, we we had, we had some we plans to say we're going to approve. <laughs> A plan that doesn't require approval. There you go. <laughs> Thank There's you. Doesn't have to go any farther than this, though. <laughs> if you want to wait, they'll sign you. Yeah. But you wouldn't get your approval to, for a plan that doesn't require approval if you didn't have proper funding and all the things. Right. Wow. No That's approval enough. under subdivision required. Yeah, right. <clears throat> well, while you're doing that, just I have an in-law apartment that I built on my daughter's house, and. In McClure, which is where I live, you have to get a variance to do that. Mm -hmm. And there is a requirement every year to say who's living in the house. Mm -hmm. So, but. But do you do it? I do. Because right oh. right I, I, I get the very, I got the variance. <laughs> Rich, is that what you were saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's I same. do think that's good. It just seems a little because that's about the only compliance that we can kind of do. And not, if they don't, not invasive. Even if they don't return, it's not a big deal. We already know who the people are. Yeah. It may be letters on that. Eighty-four percent rule, right? It, 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 it just may be different with a variance than it is with a with yeah. special yeah. permit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, essentially, it's the same kind of thing as far as a variance or just different rules. Can require when they give a variance, the Board of Appeals can require, can do it for one yearly or so, a yeah. year at a time basis. Yeah. Because they've done that many times, the Board of Appeals has granted a variance to either a business or something, and with, you know, they're, they're concerned about noise or, or other things, and say, okay, this is good for a year, and a year we'll have to go back and take a look, and you'll have to go back here and we'll renew it. You know, for a longer period or whatever, or, or just for another year. So they can, the, the appeals board can do that. So the CPC do could do, do it as a special case. permit granting authority, could do it too as a condition of approval. You could do it too as a condition of approval for a special permit. You can do that. Yeah, you can, you can do that as a Oh, really? Yeah. Already. But we don't use them that often. That's a problem. <laughs> Thank you. That was helpful. <laughs> yeah, Ali, I, I'm just glad I appreciate the input because we're just four or five best. people up here yeah. trying to do the right thing. Is that one all right? Are you going to bring it to the select board? Yeah, I think so, right? You're going to yeah, bring it to the select board for discussion, right? right. We'll we'll probably probably have have this, this, uh, ADU. ADU. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Wait. Would we have a workshop with, um, with select board? Or should be okay just now. to even go over? But we can. All right. So, well, don't you think we should? It's got to go for town vote. Yeah, yeah. It's the house. Yes. Dave. Dave. We'll get the yeah. all the edits that we've done. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll all look through that. Through. So, are you, are you think Steve O'Leary is going to bring that forward? Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know we've done it. Yeah, these are uh, the uh, okay. for that. Oh, for this thing. Yeah, yeah. Papers, yes. Yeah. 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 I think that that's the only thing you've got to actually get for this time around. And the other thing is, once that's in place, if everybody goes for it, once it's in place, um, nope. you're going to have nope. more people willing to take the next step. The only thing I'll tell you is that to get grants, to get grants, yeah. you have to have them. They may have fireworks in the back. <laughs> See that one around? Yeah. I follow that one here tonight. Alrighty, thank you. All right. Now that we're good with that. <laughs> Next 
Rusty is Rusty, correct? Yes. Yep. You have the floor, sir. All right. So basically, do you have a I can, yeah, why don't I just, they have all the materials that you sent to me, so okay, um, oh. just to kind of summarize over the summer, there had, or sorry, not summer, a few months ago, yeah. um, the CPC had issued a minor modification for this site that um, allowed for an outdoor storage area, and that was associated with the landscaping business. The landscaping business has since received a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals for that use, um, but the ZBA actually required that the uh, outdoor storage area be um, in a location that's different from what the CPC approved on their plan. So um, Mr. House has uh, submitted another request for minor modification showing the new proposed location, um, you know, per the ZBA's request. And um, there was also, there were also some questions that um, he has uh, answered and I've provided those uh, materials in, in the folder too. Um, so I don't know, Mr. House, if you want to address. Sure. So the, the original first uh, meeting we had was via Zoom with, with you guys, and I was originally looking to have storage and parking for a trailer and one truck in the residential A district. And then through our conversation and going back and forth, you guys had a, a good suggestion. Can we keep it out of residential A against the building and they can park if you have the site development plan um, Put the storage of pallets, extra material, where one is, and then maybe park in the two of the other spots there where it says three, designated three. And I said, you know something, I think that'll work, but I would like it to have the option for them to park at the top of this drawing where it says riprap stonewall, if they needed to park their truck and trailer there. Because in the winter, I, I put snow over here. You know, Behind the this, building? Yes. And uh, that was it. So what happened is, we, we all agreed and it was great, I think it was a good idea, and then I don't have to worry about anything in residential A. Um, I had my, uh, one of my engineers m mock up the plan, and what he did is, he put this bottom note right above, that says proposed miscellaneous excess material, pavers, cobblestone brick, and then um, highway business, business, he put, Parking the, he said he put the storage of materials up at the rip wall, which is not the intent. And okay. you guys picked that up on it in one well, of your questions. I, we was, Warren and I were sitting here when this building came in. Yes. And the, the neighbors were not happy with anything anywhere near there. Right. As I recall. So, yeah, and this, so it's only going to be storage. So this, I made it clear on this one and in my response to that question. Only storage will be where it says number one behind the building, against the building, um, with the option to park here or over there. See where this rip wall is, the rip wrap stone wall? Yeah. When I'm standing on the parking lot, the wall's about, I'm gonna say eight. Yes, it's a And then you got an uh, yeah. eight foot fence, so you right. can't see nothing. You can't see anything. That's but. right. So just so you know, because it's hard to tell by this. The question is, are they driving diesel trucks? No. They're driving she has a, um, she has a, um, a a little dump truck, a small one, okay. that, and then she has one 12 foot trailer. That's it. That's all she's got. Now. That's all she has. That's going to go behind the building here. The trailer's going to go behind the building. I could I could put the trailer right here, going this way, because if you this is pretty wide area here. Yeah. So I can just have her back it up there and just put the car. She's never here during the day. It's only at night too. Oh, she says, yeah, she's just throwing it at night because she's got right. it out yes. in the day. Yep. Now, over the winter, is that going to be there over the winter? Yes. So, in the winter, she's probably going to put her car and trailer over here, unless I just plow out a little spot for her. Is it in a You spot? know something? During the uh, time. Well, what I mean is I can't see where you're pointing, but you have the area up against the wall, and it actually, it's not that big as, as it's shown. That was, this is proposed we're looking at, but it kind of, really just kind of semicircles around and even takes over the last two parking spaces so that the last two parking spaces are more like motorcycle or very small subcompact parking spots not on paper again this is proposed that yeah these are all these are full size parking no spaces. they're not that, those two last spots are which about, ones about three quarter to half spots the last spots up, Next, up at the top part of the, the, top of the wall yeah like oh the you mean you mean way at the top in between the round no the last two spots on e either side. 
the, the one on the left is like almost a motorcycle spot. The one on the right could maybe handle a little. Do you want to bring the plan up? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. why don't you guys take a look at the paper <coughs> plans? I, I, I sent photos. They're all up on the share file. <coughs> well, I saw the photos. Okay. Yeah, so right. I have plenty of these three copies here. And this, right, well, obviously, this is the old. Yeah, this is this is what I'm looking at, Rusty. This is the this is the plan that shows the parking. So the the the, the last spots are kind of like this. This kind of goes like this. And this goes like this, and then also this. I see. What you're this saying. goes like this. The whole yes. thing is more like that. Yes, I agree. So that's why I was just worried about like how's how are they kind of getting up here and parking? Like it seems kind of strange. This is. Um, so my trucks right now, there is a little rock on this one here, like you said, yeah. but you can still make the parking spot. These are full length. This is kind they're of They're full length, but they're not area. They're not like an F-250 could not. Right. Like full length. I would say they'd probably things. use this one and this one. And that's fine. I was just, yeah. make, I was just sure. making sure, like sure. when we talk about parking and, yep. but I don't think, again, the material part, we were just worried about. Yes, that was a good point, because I, I just yeah, changed it, because that's fine. Right. You know, I'm not going to put anything there, and I wanted to make sure. But here, here's, you know, while we, if, if Ryan wants to come here, because we don't, you know, this is not up on the screen, and I don't know if that happens, but, but this, is everybody knows on this, around me right now, this is my biggest pet peeve <laughs> about, is when someone comes to us, or ZBA, and I'm the lays on there, and they're presenting a plan, and they're saying, this is my as build, and this is what I want to do. That's when, to me, it opens the door to say, okay, is this the as built? And I'll just run through all the things that aren't the as built, Rusty. So, but I want to preface that by saying, you've got enough parking spaces. Yeah. So in the end, I'm like, I'm on your side. But sure. this is what I would what, like to ask. So all of these islands are gone, okay? Yes, that's gone. They're that's all gone. Yep. You know, they're all gone. Um, let, let's go through the different things. These, the parking spaces are different. So this is this is all parking. That island's gone, and you created parking there now. And now you just have these two spots here. In the back here, the handicaps are gone. They're here now. Now these two are still here. Uh, well, they don't say handicap. They're not on the wall or on the ground, so they're not handicap spots. They're they're now here. You have them right here. Um, over here, you have two garages. That are stuck. That take out two of the spots, and yes. even one man door, man door. So technically, this thing oh, should be restriped. The no parking type thing should be where these are. You've got maybe lucky seven to eight spots here. Really, mm -hmm. you know, really. Yep. Yep. You've got this one here. That is there. Yep. This doesn't exist. This goes up all the way up to like 102 right here. Yes. It's all dirt. So these exactly. are never created. So those aren't spots. You know. Right. Um, so when you say like I got 38 spots, you know, you have about 22. Yeah. And this is this building is about to 28,000 square feet. You're supposed to have about 50, 48 spots. You know, just for this building, it's 600 to one. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the code. I mean, whether it's retail, business, 600 to one. So you then you go over here, and this is 3,200. You only need 10. Yep. So you've got tons of parking. So that's right, not the thing, right. and you're going to take away some. But what I'd like to see, and I know it's some cost to you, Rusty, but update like it this. was 23 years ago. Yeah. Is when this date. That's when I'm Can you yeah. update it? That helps the next person yeah. sitting here. I might not be here, sure. but if this comes back. And now it's got this other thing, and I'm going to add this. We can't have that. And then the second thing is a precedent. You know, again, we're not here to do site plan review, really. But right. we can't, if everybody in this town, every, every along 28, just said, you know what? I know the CPC told us we put islands in, but we got rid of them all. <laughs> you know, right. and everybody down at Stop and Shop, they just paved the whole thing. Yeah. Get rid of all islands. It's fine, and I get it. We're in New England. Islands are a pain. <laughs> Know, trying to plow those so we all get it more and definitely gets yeah. it but the other the other thing here too what I want to see because I don't think it's you're not allowed to do this but there's a cut right here uh, easily yes. of, of the uh, around 102 I'd say yep all the way up to the second parking spot yes. right here yeah it comes back in so you you've got that there that should be shown you've got gravel up here you get trailer storage within the buffer zone you get like three or four unlicensed registered trailers over here mm -hmm. another three here that's another issue, but I don't care. And then over here, you have a bu you have two dumpsters. It says right on it with fencing. There's no fencing. There's just two dumpsters sitting yeah. there, waste management dumpsters sitting there. So there's a lot of things there that aren't in things. the plan. Yeah. But we want to help you and say this is good. We're okay. all we're all good. But can you update this thing? Yeah, and we'll, talk to, and we'll talk all to be good. Our, and that'll end up taking care of you because you know, 
in a way, this the other is going to agree with this, but if you get rid of these things, they'll actually be now in an updated drawing. Yeah. And yeah. this that. this CPC will let that'll cover you then. You're going to sure. be covered for existing conditions, even the creation of these spots, mm -hmm. you know, from islands. Hey, not here, not here to hassle yeah. you, but I just, I'm a big I plan guy. Like, I want built. things not detailed. Really <laughs> I just want things detailed, yeah. like how they really are. So yeah. when it does go to ZBA, if it has to go back to them, does it? Or are they done? Somebody might have. They had done it. I think yeah. they were all saying. As, as long as we accept what they asked. Right. right. So right. there will be no shortage. And I will talk a little bit about doing what you say. Yeah. Because I want to. I like I this is from Bill to me. I'll send you my markup. Sure. Yeah, no, honestly, just give me your email. I'll fire it right over to you. Okay. So that's all. You know, and yep. it doesn't, I don't know how, you know, I'm not the procedural person here. <laughs> we can approve it on the condition we just update the as built plan, or do you want to have them come back? You know, Ryan, yeah, the well, chairman, what do you want to do? Should, it, with the minor modification, was he supposed to produce a new as built? We don't always well, do that. It's up to you. But we can do that on this well, one. Since the as built is not plan. what's on the ground. So this was technically, yeah. No, I saw and that. then when we agreed to all go here, we never really, right. I got the letter was approved, but, I, but then for, right. the, for, the, for the... And yet that's kind of a natural spot to put it, I'd yeah, have to say, yeah. but again, I, no I get... I keeping out of the residential No, that's area. what I mean. Yeah. I, I get that part, so that's... So, what can we do for that, Danielle? I mean, you could, could if you want to approve it on the condition that we get a, an asphalt plan, and then we just put well, the plan in the file. Well, if it was an original site plan, if it mm -hmm. was an original site plan, we wouldn't sign off until we got a... a, a uh, has built. No, you would sign. I mean, you would endorse the plan. Yeah, and then, then we require an as built. Yeah, and, and then there would end. eventually right. we would and get we, an as built. And we would, and we right. would hold a, uh, we'd hold money for it. Too. Yeah, it's a bond for it. A bond for it, so that it got done. But yeah. on, on, in this situation, I think we, if we, however we do it, we just require a new site plan. <coughs> we won't yeah. hold the bond because yeah. that's that's okay. kind of. That would be silly. Yeah. And then just you know, just come into the next meeting and it, yeah. it'll yeah. be very quick. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? We won't you, so are you saying you would wait to approve it or you would approve it and then ask I'm all, to I'm, all, I'm fine doing that, but I don't want to break precedent if that's yeah, no, 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 I, I think it's being a, a minor modification, we're gonna approve it tonight, right? Yeah, why don't you okay. why don't you approve right. it and we'll put condition. the condition in that yeah. we need to have an as well plan. Right. Yeah, the condition right. would be that we get an as-built plan. As well plan. There you go. Right. Which is very simple. You taking all this in, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, the only question would be, and I'm not going to create more work or make this more of a pain in the butt than it is, but I, if we're going to have them do an as-built, I think we should just make sure when they're doing it that there's no either life safety, site lighting, any other deficiencies that are... Right. That should be addressed now. Such like as, in, in such as on, and it might not be... Is this plan the... Uh, I'm not concerned with the landscape. It was she just sheet one one. But there should probably be a table just again on parking as I stated. So again, in See a way you're covered because it's gonna say now, I mean I I'd, I'd occupy those spaces or say trailer storage or whatever. Sure. Yep. These are not, you know, so now they'll do a recount, put these in the right spots, all that, and then put a little small table over here. Yeah, that's you know, for that building part, part required, uh, parts and, and that that's why you might want to say, okay. You know, I'm going to take some of these down here and make them part of mine. That, that's what the engineer will know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I mean, I think this restaurant really only needs like the yeah. and that's it. So, yeah. so the rest of these could be yeah, these sure. are yours. These, they these, put that these the spots table. here were for the for the uh, yeah. for the yeah. And they, put, and they put that on the table. Then dimensionally, you're good. You know, okay. all that stuff you're covered. So, and, and then the striping and the, the handicap. We're going to make sure what's it's updated. What's existing yeah. is correct. Is correct. Yeah, it won't mean you really have to go restripe anything, Rusty. Right. You've got it all kind of covered. Right. It'll just be saying. maybe restriping down there. I don't know. Yeah. If you're taking more than one spot, just black out that last line, right? Okay. And then just put a big thing across, hatching it up like a storage or... Yeah, yeah there'll be no storage here. It was just yeah, no storage. Yeah. But, you know, okay. it I know you it might be trailer parking or something like that. Yeah. Right? That's what she's going to park a trailer and stuff, yeah. you know. Okay. That way you don't have to worry, too. Right. Yeah. You know, well, you can put a sign up there that it's, you know, it's, it's used for her, whatever her company's name is, put right. it there, okay. you know, parking for. At least your guys will park there. Because <laughs> they'll they'll get in trouble. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Right. No, I I think that was that's okay. good data. Thank you guys. Yeah. Right. Watch the chair. Whoa. Oh, you're right. Sorry.
it's only right. a little mic. It's only a Phil, mic. Phil just you got it. Oh, it's not, again. It's not mine. Don't worry. These are his. These are his. So, uh, I just wrote a motion up if that oh, you did? works. Yeah. yeah. Just read it. Okay, I'll just read, read it. it. Okay. Um, he can say so move. Yep. Okay. I move to approve the requested modification of the site plan for 197 Main Street to allow for a change in location of the outdoor storage areas and parking as shown on the submitted plan revision submitted on November 8th, 2022, um, with the condition that, uh, the, that the applicant submit an updated as built plan. Is there anything else? I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing that, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Ooh. Should we be doing roll call? You should actually because we are on Zoom. Sorry. Okay. Mr. Pierce. Aye. Mr. Rudloff. Aye. Mr. Ryan. Aye. And the chair says aye. Four in favor. And Mr. Johnson. Yes. This passes. Okay. All right. All right. What's the time frame. Oh, time frame for that as built. I will be depend on Luke's schedule. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I but I will take before the end. Of, how about we say before the end of the year? Okay. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. they're fine. They're approved and okay yes. to go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can well, start using the use okay. space, but yeah, okay, it's an as built. Because okay, it's going to be on our You're books. not going anywhere. And, no. And these two young ladies will be hounding you. Yes. To turn my lights off. <laughs> we know where you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good Thank night. Right. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too. You too. What do we got, Danielle? We got uh, MBTA. Oh yeah. So really, uh, short, really quickly. Oh. I think so. Um. So for the MBTA. <laughs> what? Um, for the MBTA community's um, issue, I, I had a meeting with the town administrator today. We went over um, what we discussed as far as of, um, you know submitting an action plan, and um, he thought it would be a good idea to speak with the select board about it at their next meeting, which will be on the 21st. So I'll go to that, and I can present to them um, what we what it was that we discussed and the application for the action plan that we talked about. Okay. Um, so I can, if you'd like to come, that's great. If not, I'll keep you posted. Um, I don't know what time yet or where it will fall on the agenda, but I'll let you know as soon as I find that out. Okay. Um, and then I had another, um, I spoke kind of briefly with Chris about this. Um, I, I had a request from the developer of 14 Concord Street to use um, a, a different uh, inspection um, engineer for inspection services for for the stormwater permit requirements um, and so I just I went ahead and I did ask for quotes from other engineers who do that type of work um, a couple of them replied that they just were too busy and couldn't provide one um, the engineer for the project Luke Roy had suggested um, John Bobrek, um, I contacted Mr. Bobrek and I asked him for a quote and I did receive a proposal. So I have the GM2 proposal and I have Mr. Bobrek's proposal. The, the project applicant prefers to use uh, Mr. Bobrek's quote. I just wanted to share the information with you. It is ultimately the CPC's decision who we use for inspection services. So, I mean, that is up to this you, is but. Is it for SWIFTS? Is that what this one? No, this is the, for uh, this is inspections for fourteen stormwater. It's it's for the stormwater permit requirements. So it's yeah. really everything in relation Swiss. to sedimentation and you know you know uh, erosion controls. Uh, it's called yellow. Stuff. Drainage Cobiello, flooding. Yeah. yeah. Once a week, right? I'm sorry. Is it once a week the inspection? No, it's um. <laughs> excuse me. It's it's a number of inspections. It's not a necessary. I mean, it depends on the construction schedule, but it's basically six or seven visits. Um, and these days. are the two. I don't know if you guys want to take a look. Is it, a, is it a, just, a, just curiosity? Is it competitive uh, pricing? Very competitively priced. They're, this, they're very actually, similar. Actually, yeah. Davis is, Dave's lower. It was $700 lower. Now, what I don't have is a breakdown of the man hours. Uh, GM2 had said it was attached, but it's actually not attached, but the overall Price for the for the inspection work is you know um, it, it's it's a seven it's within seven hundred dollars. So, but they're lower. Yeah, so GM two is a little lower. I, I and that in itself sends a red flag up for me. 
This yeah. is something that, you know, we're supposed to be kind of using an unbiased third party engineer. Yeah. And this is somebody that was referenced by the engineer of the property. Yeah, you know, the property. You know, this is somebody he, you know, that we could go and call, and it, you know, it's it's, it's interesting. It, it it it's it's a fair. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm, I'm concerned with that. Neutral, unbiased. Yes, yeah, it's, you, it's, know. you know, is it is it neutral anymore? Is it unbiased? Uh, you know, I don't know. They 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 know each other. They've done work together before. Yeah. Luke has done work with Dave with the other folks too. It's just a different name now. Um, the people who are doing it are the same people. Um, so there, there's, you know, there's something going on that I don't, I just don't, I don't know. And, you know, we've never done this. I don't think we've ever done this before since I've been on the board, going to another engineering firm. We've gone out for bids. Well, well. Is it, um, Danielle, did you mention that they couldn't meet the schedule or was it they just wanted no, to? Oh, no, no. Okay. Um, initially when I sent the proposal from GM2, the reaction was this is a lot of money and we didn't really think we should have to, you know, have this type of inspection work for this kind of project. It's not a subdivision. It, it is a little bit new. I mean, it, it's not the first time we've asked for inspection services for a private commercial site. We have done that before, but especially now, with the stormwater bylaw that we have, and with the town's MS4 permit, and with you know our, our engineer who is um, New England Civil Engineering helping out the town with compliance with the MS4 requirements, um, they have really they have told us you have got to be doing inspections on projects like this, um, you know that meet your stormwater bylaw that have you know substantial disturbance. Um, so this this was something I actually had New England Civil look at as a completely you know unbiased um, and and you know they agreed that we should be doing this inspection. So you know initially the original proposal was was, was just from GM two because that's who we use. Um, but the applicant you know kind of objected to to that proposal and and I, I thought it was really on the basis of price. But then when I received the quote from the other firm and it was very similar, I I, I, I don't I don't have another I, I don't know another reason. I I, I, yeah. I can't. You know, say why they prefer one over the other. I don't know. It, it did. When, when there, Daniel told me that, I said, "We'll bring it back to the board." But you know, I'm, I'm my. Is there there there, there is a bit of of, of uh, stormwater work here, right? I mean, yes. this is uh, there's uh, there's some drain uh, drainage issues and yeah. all kinds of things. Got a wetland right back there. Yeah, but this be but part the, of our the, well the field. It is also but run right up against those other properties on Crockett yeah. Street. You know, I mean, as well, you know, um, and probably have some effect on, Nine on thousand the bobcat inspection. Problem. I mean, a thousand, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. It is a little, it is a little kind of. I don't uh, necessarily know why somebody would. Uh, the price per inspection is high, but the, uh -huh. the frequency is low. Make sense? For, for whom? For, for the inspections. I mean, they're basically just, they're not, it's not at a regular interval, which I'd expect, and, and to Dave's point, $1,000 of inspection for the, that size site just seems excessive. Where is the first one from? The G? GM2 is uh, GM2, GM2, and they were 700 less expensive than the they, overall, is this overall, overall yeah. consequence or really. But yeah. where are they from? I saw the other it's design consultants. It's design consultants. Design consultants. Gene, Dave, Gene Grandy. We've been using they were bought. Are they low, where are they based out of them? Sorry. Uh, now they're based out of Somerville. Yeah. So, yeah. The thing is, yeah, they, they, uh, they bought a building in Somerville. <laughs> but I, I guess my point the is, is the vice president used to grew up right. in this town, basically. And he's, he's, he actually does most of these, the on-site inspections. But a thousand dollars a visit. I mean, just, so, so what I don't understand is, is, is yeah. it, isn't it? It's a ninety three hundred versus ten now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and they don't want to go with GM two. Yeah. It's cheaper. The, yeah. And they compl originally complained. I thought about it was the, the other way around. I apologize. Right. 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 Until I saw right, it. right. And they, they, they originally complained about the price yeah. of this. Now they want to go another seven hundred dollars. GM two. That, that, <laughs> that, yeah. That bothers me. Yeah. That That's bothers me. So. I, I think I just heard, I don't know, Warren? What? You agree with what Dave just said? Jim Tui said. 
and Ryan said the same thing. No, no offense to Robert, he's a PE, he's licensed in the state. Yeah, he's licensed in the state, just, but. But there's, why would you if it's less, and that's who we rely yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. Uh, as a peer, we, we have ground, we have, we have some good. So well, <coughs> if we use, uh, you're talking about keeping Gene Grandy on the project. Yeah. Well, I mean, and again, he's, uh, this other engineering firm, has they done any work in North Reading? I mean, Dave is very familiar with this whole town. I mean, yes. Yeah, what they want, sure they're all over what Jerry us. wants. Well, they're in Danvers, I mean. Yeah, so not far away at all. Not far away. Yeah, that's a little I'm not, I mean, this is the first time I hear <laughs> their name, though. I haven't heard them on any other project. Has they already, have they conducted one? Is that why, an inspection, and they didn't hit it off? <laughs> no, no. And in fact, uh, GM2 did the peer review for the project, so I mean, they're not, I think, unfamiliar with them as a firm. Um, I think even more the reason to have them do it is yeah. that they've done the review, so they know exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for. Yeah. That does tend to work out well with our subdivisions. I mean, they've done the peer review, so they yeah. know yeah. You know, the project well. That's usually. Uh, there's the just subject to two in other towns is the peer review person is the person that's going to yeah, uh, review. It rubs me. I mean, if if it was the other way around, then you'd be. Paused. Then I would say, okay, well, maybe this guy's a little small. He wants to, you know, we'll go that way. But we know he's big now, GM too. But he's still less expensive. Mm -hmm. There's something. There just seems to be something off. Yeah. Either either we're squeezing it in, and he's actually not going to get there because he doesn't have the manpower. He's just going to write the reports. Or, I don't know. My, my, the hairs in the back of my head went up. The neck went up when yeah, I heard I don't think it's a good precedent to have the applicant no. directing who to use for a peer review. I just think it's I can ask you, you know, looking for other quotes, that's fine. Yeah. People came back with who you went. Yeah, I did were, reach out to a couple of the and friends that I And suddenly this one came up from him. Right, right. And that's, and this, and they, they bit and gave a quote right away, right? Mm -hmm. How quick was the quote from them? wasn't like overnight or anything. It's still, I mean, everyone's still really busy. I mean. Oh yeah, well that, that's kind of what I mean, I mean. Yeah, it was, it took a little time to get something, yeah. you know. Uh, I don't, I can find out, but I don't, I don't That's know. all right, that's all right. I don't see any reason to change horses. I don't either. Yeah, I mean, um, Dave's got a long history here. Yeah, and, and, and um, he's tries to protect his town. And he knows, the, yeah, he knows the town, so. Yeah, he knows the town well. Daniel, do you need a vote from us? I mean, I don't think you have to take a vote necessarily, but if, if you'd like to, you can. I, 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 would, say, I would say that we stick with uh, that mm -hmm. we stick with Gene Grady, and that, but that we tell them that we would prefer to stick with with, with him, and ask mm -hmm. if there is a sufficient reason to change. In other words, give them the opportunity to say no. We want to change because, because of this. Yeah. And if that's and if and if it seems to be a reasonable request and everything and a quick check of the background of this other company doesn't reveal be any problems, I don't even know why you leave the door open. What would a good reason be for the applicant to want to direct to these with their partner? Well, you know, one of the things that I have seen in in, in larger projects is is, is uh, if the, the people don't get along. In other words, so you, if you have a GC over there that's worked with with. Uh, a particular engineer, a particular group, and everything, and had issues. You know, they butt heads, and and, and that's and it's not good. And I've seen that on jobs, a few times, and so they just move a couple people around, and and uh, and you don't have the problem. So if that's if there's an issue like that, some some people are oil and water. Or if there's a conflict of interest, then we kind of have to let them, yeah, have, you know, have someone of, else. If there's but a that's, conflict of interest, yeah, that's different. Then we need to know about that. Yeah. yeah. We need to know about it. they got to tell us. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah, assuming so I, I did so the peer review, so I, so I, you know, I understand what you're saying, and, but I hate to really, since this is such an unusual request, I would hate to slam the door without asking, or giving at least one opportunity to, you know, state your reason. Do you want me to ask them to come in? I mean, I can ask them to tell me the reasons and transmit that to you, or I'm sure well, I, I, I would have to say that there could be a private reason, in which case you'd be the best one to know, and okay. then you could bring you could say, okay, this it seems there's a there's a reasonable request here, and then we'll yeah, go. Yeah, you, okay. you've okay. got to know about it. At I least. wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to air it in open media. Oh. Yeah, no. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. That would be my decision. So I, unless they come up with something really good. Yeah. A preference stays with Gene Grandy. Yes. 
unless you have sufficient reason. I will speak with them. Thank you. And there was reasons. It seemed like there was. You know, so Thank you. Thank you. What else you got, Danielle? Anything? Um, minutes. Minutes. We got minutes. We only got one yeah, minute. Yeah, we'll do the minutes. Minute. Yeah. Well, <coughs> the second one's not in. Right. Stay. Approved minutes dated October 18, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Rudlow? Aye. Brian? Aye. Mr. Leeds is aye. Four in favor, and Jeremiah is not here. In the absence to you, abstention. Should we correct that other vote that we took? Which? The first vote. Um, oh, on did you do a roll, the roll call vote? Did you do a roll call vote for that one? No. No. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt. You could just say for the record. No. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, because it's already been voted on. But That's true. then at least your qualification. Yeah, for clarification. Okay. For clarification, the voice vote, uh, the roll call vote for the A and R for 14 and 16 Flint Street, as follows: Mr. Pierce. Aye. Mr. Redlaw. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Mr. Aiden. Aye. Four in favor. Has not changed. Thank you. <laughs> Daniel, uh, you have any? There's no zoning board. No, not no. today. No, the meeting was last week, so they don't have one up. I don't think they have one scheduled right now. Oh, okay. For uh, December yet? Yeah. December 1st, I believe. When is it? Uh, December oh. 1st. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yet, sorry. Thank you, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't even know this. Here for some. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want, I guess they want you there, right? Oh, virtual, <coughs> virtual. Yeah, that's virtual, that's right. Right, so our next meeting would be December 6th. Which is after their meeting. Right, so yeah. we won't have time so to So can you, um, can you ask Kathy at least to throw them up on the share file? I can do that, yeah. Just so we could, um, even if it's, you're able to just, we can comment back to Danielle if we saw anything just so it wouldn't be official, but if some of the members are just curious, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know what's what you do when it, it's after it's uh. It's interesting that they do so. that. Yeah. I, mean, I asked her today if she had any for our meeting tonight, so I don't know if there's enough time for her to receive applications, get them into the paper for the December first. Right. So if she right. didn't have any for us tonight, she may not. It's right. I mean, you got Thanksgiving in there, so you're going to lose two days right there, right? Oh, yeah, they wouldn't have time to advertise if she hasn't received right. any by now. Indeed. It's already the 15th. There's no yeah. way that there was a time. Oh, my gosh. I, I'll ask her again. But yeah. He says it's, I, Warren says it's snowing outside That's what my phone based says. on what his phone says. But Is that right? right now? That's what my phone says. So Danielle. What does Phil say? All right. So on, on that <laughs> note, I think we'll adjourn this okay. I just have one question. Just sorry, Mr. <laughs> so <coughs> is there is there enough time, Deb, for when they for the for the CPC is part of the advertising and everything? Is there enough time built in with their normal application process for the CPC to comment as we're supposed to do on a, on an application? If there isn't, there's got to be there's a problem there, right? No, it depends on how our meetings fall because yeah. they have a requirement to advertise twice in the paper just like we do. Right. Yeah. So they receive their applications. So if, if they have, if say as of tomorrow, they haven't received applications, we know that there's no way that they can be ready for a meeting on December 1st to, right. to discuss, you know, new public hearings unless they've already been advertised and they're just discussing continued, continued previous one. Hearings. They yeah. had a pretty, you know, they had a lot on the last week yeah so maybe but but they're not <coughs> obligated to notify us in the same way that they're obligated to do you know legal so they're notice. really not required it's, to comment on it no i not, mean it's I more of a courtesy kind of no it's more <coughs> like they give it to us for us to comment it is more of a courtesy a lot of times okay. don't do that um so if our meetings fall usually our meetings fall at the right time so we can give comment but sometimes it doesn't work out that way right. just, okay know, we might cancel a meeting and then you know yeah no i get it i just want to understand if it was sure. a requirement that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Okay. Anything else for everybody? Here.
What's our next meeting? December 6th. Oh, right. before I say that <laughs> with so much confidence, why don't I check the calendars? I think yeah, it's December, December 6th. 6th. <laughs> it is, okay. And we've got one scheduled for the 20th, but. You'll be gone. I won't be here. I think we should cancel in honor of Debbie's birthday. I'm, I'll be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Debbie's birthday? Can't have a meeting. No way. No. Yeah. What day? Yeah, we'll be what over day? at Deb's house. Yeah, sure. December 20th. Yeah, December 20th. Yeah, December 20th. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be on a plane. Yeah. Where are you going? Going to Vegas for the Patriots game, actually. Wow. Oh. What is that? Yeah. Well, we got they get a tough schedule the next few yeah, oh, yeah. weeks. Huh? <laughs> three games in like three games days. in twelve days. 12 days right? Yeah, three games in twelve days.